In this tutorial, we're going to talk about starting a new project in Adobe Illustrator. Anytime you open up Adobe Illustrator, we're going to do Create New right here. We're going to create a new page layout for ourselves. In this case, we're going to do an 11 by 17, and we're going to make it landscape and orientation. We're going to put two site plans on it uh, that will serve as the basis for some diagrams that we're going to create. Now, I have some recent new documents that are here, or the presets for those, but if this is your first time using Adobe Illustrator, you're not going to have those. So we're just going to go over to Print right here. The first thing you'll see is the, the project details. We'll go ahead and name this uh, Diagrams. And our units, we're going to change from points, which is a pretty common page layout uh, between points and picas. We're going to change it to inches, which is easier for us to digest here. We'll change the width to 17 inches, as we said. We'll keep the height at 11 so that we have a landscape orientation. We're going to leave the artboards at 1, although that's something that uh, we'll change a little bit later in this tutorial as we get started in here. Uh, but if you knew you wanted a multi-page Illustrator document, this is where you'd go ahead and create those additional artboards. It's in, in essence multi-pages. Right now we're going to have one sheet that is an 11 by 17, but by bumping this up to five, you would have five sheets in there. And then there's some additional advanced options under here and more settings. We're just going to leave all those as default and click Create. So you can see here we've got our 11 by 17 page set up. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to place uh, two site plans in here. Uh, we'll do that by already having those site plans created. I've got a few uh, in my resources right here. And the first one we're going to bring in is just this JPEG right here. It's an AutoCAD site plan uh, that's going to be in the backdrop for our diagrams. And you want to keep your backdrop relatively simple. We'll look at some other options, but if it has too much going on, it kind of works against the simplicity of the diagram that you're trying to create. So you want to keep these simple. In fact, I might go as far as to take hatches off of this and tone down some of the line weights as well, but we'll stick with this just for now. So to bring that in, I'm going to go to File, Place, and again, I'm going to navigate to that file. I've already got it here, and we're just going to say Place. Now, right here you see at the bottom you're going to have link is checked. And what this means is that it's going to link to this file. It's not going to embed this file in there. Uh, much like in AutoCAD when you insert a raster image, it's just a reference file. Versus Photoshop when you bring something in, typically it's embedded in there. And so we're going to keep it linked for now. There's additional import options, but we're going to skip those as well and just say place. Now at this point, uh, we'll see the icon right there. I'm just going to click, and you're going to notice that it brings it in. Now this was already an 11 by 17, so that it matches up. But as I mentioned earlier, I actually want to make this smaller so that it fits. Uh, I can fit two of these on a page. To do that, I'm going to hover over this uh, one of these grips in the top right, left, bottom left, bottom right. I'm going to click and hold on it and drag it. You'll notice that if I'm not careful, uh, I can actually distort the image, and that is going to be something we definitely don't want. So I'm going to hit Control z or Command-Z on my Mac. I'm going to grab this grip, and as I'm doing this, I'm going to hold Shift. This is going to lock that ratio so that I can make sure to get it, um, or keep it in that same sort of orientation where it's not distorted. Now for this diagram, I actually don't want uh, some of the periphery on this, so I'm actually going to clip some of this off, and we'll do that by clicking on the image. Uh, with our selection tool right here and clicking the word mask. It allows us to pull this stuff in just a little bit so that we can cut off some of the edge, some of the different components that we might not want in here. I'm going to click off the image and click back on. You'll see that I can actually move this around at this point. Some other stuff down here that I'm not a huge fan of having half of a graphic scale. So what I'm going to do is use my rectangle tool. Uh, this tool, the shortcut for it is M. And I'm going to just drag a rectangle over uh, that right there. Now, I have no fill and no stroke uh, over here in my little icons. And so I'm going to click to make sure the fill is in front. And then just click this white right here, and it's going to white that out. So that's an easy way uh, versus creating a more complex clipping mask right there to just cover up the content that I don't need. Now, once you've created the mask, you actually can't go back and click mask again on here. In fact, you're going to have to use uh, one of two ways to adjust this after the fact. One is to uh, click on these tools up top. You can see by default you adjust the clipping mask, which means if I grab this, I can actually resize it. Again, holding shift to make it a little bit larger. Undo that here. And if I click on the next uh, icon next to it, it says Edit Contents. So if I click on this, you'll notice that the rectangle changes, and I can actually move the contents inside of that clipping mask. Undo that to get it back to where I was. 
Now the other way to do this is by clicking on the selection tool. It selects the clipping mask. It mouse allows me to move this around. And if I click on the direct selection tool, what it's going to do is I've got to click off and then click back on. It again selects the content. So both of these are ways to, by default, sort of click and adjust the content uh, versus the clipping mask on here. I'm going to grab both of these, and I say both of these because I've got this smaller white rectangle here, and I'm going to right click and say group. After that, I'm going to grab my direct selection tool, hold down option on my Mac or Alt on a PC. Notice that that icon changes to two arrows. Click and drag over, and if I hold shift after I start clicking and dragging, it locks it right in place. I'm going to set it right next to it. I've got both of these the same size, and I'm going to select both again and now again holding shift I'm gonna make them a little bit larger to where they kind of fill the page so this is one way to kind of get the basis for these two diagrams right here maybe I might feel like it's too uh, bold on the page so I'm gonna grab the opacity slider and dial it back a little I would want to use uh, do both of these the exact same I mentioned earlier that this was actually linked in to uh, this file right here. If I go to Window and Links, it's going to open up my link panel right here, and I can see that I've got the site plan in. Might be some instances where you start diagramming, you realize you want to change something. Maybe it's, uh, man, I really wish I had shadows in here. And in this case, that's the example that I'm going to use. I actually created another Photoshop file, and this is a PSD file that has uh, some shadows for both the buildings and the trees. And in my Illustrator file, I want to go back and actually change this right here. And because we linked it, and I've got the links panel right here, I'm going to go down to uh, this link icon here and click Relink. And then come over to click on this PSD file. Now they have to be the same sheet size and resolution for this to match up one to one. You can't just pick anything and expect it to match up. But in this case, it was created on the same uh, Photoshop file. And I'm going to click Place right here. What you're going to notice is that it is going to update this one right here. I'll do the same thing for this. And I can update both of these right here. So either one might serve as a good backdrop. I tend to think the shadows might actually overpower it a little bit. Uh, but it still could work depending on what diagram I'm wanting to show on top of this. Another option is you might even create the diagram, just use this as reference, and then turn it off after that. Now, I want to show one other option for myself, and to do that, I'm going to do it on an entirely separate artboard. I'm going to close my links panel right here, and I want to go to Document Setup. What this allows me to do is actually click on Edit Artboards, and I can take this entire artboard. Uh, similar to using the Selection tool, I can hold uh, Option and pull this down, and I'm going to create a copy of that artboard right below. And it copies all the contents along with it, so I'm going to click on my selection tool, it gets out of document setup, and I've got another artboard right here. Now instead of using these, I'm actually going to start over with a different approach, sort of a third and final approach to a backdrop. Now there's a lot of different options out there, but one of them is to take a rendering. The essence of a diagram is that it uh, is simplifying the entire rendering to highlight one specific component. And so in this case, having the full rendering behind it, it's just going to be too bold. So what I'm going to do is go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and I'm going to turn the saturation all the way down. This turns the document to just black and white, and then we'll say File, Save As, and we're going to save it as our rendering name, but I'm just going to add BW behind it. We'll say OK right here, come back to Illustrator, and say File, Place. And here I'm going to grab this rendering right here, say place, drop it in. It's going to be too large, of course, so holding shift, grabbing this corner, make it smaller. Click on the mask, pull this edge in, pull this edge in as well. And we'll put this on this half of the page. I'm going to use my direct selection, holding option, drag this one over, and again shift to keep them in line with each other. Select both and 
make it a larger size on a page. Now, these diagrams don't necessarily have to be to scale. It doesn't hurt to have them to a known scale, but people aren't scaling uh, information off of this. It's about simplifying it and having a clean graphic that highlights just one component that you're trying to uh, articulate through these diagrams. Now, part of this is having a really light backdrop, so I'm going to select both of these and dial back the opacity here as well so we can have something really light in the background. There might be times where you're trying to build in uh, some different legends or components. Maybe it's images that are on the page as well. And there are going to be some helpful tools for, uh, for creating some guidelines in here. What I'm going to do is go to View Rulers and say Show Rulers. Command R is the shortcut for that on my Mac or Control R on a PC. I can actually click on the ruler, drag it down, and I can create some guidelines in here. These guidelines won't print but they'll help me with maybe lining up my legend components. I can do the same thing uh, from the edge rulers as well to get some uh, vertical lines in here. Another helpful tool when you're trying to get consistent spacing is working with the grid. So I'm going to go to View Grid, and I'm going to say Show Grid right here. So I've got the guides right here, which are the uh, cyan. I can turn them on and off, but the grid is right below it. We'll say Show Grid. So for mine, it's a one-inch grid with eight subdivisions, and that's really defined by uh, the preferences. So if you go to uh, Illustrator, Preferences, and Guides, and Grid, you'll notice that you can change the grid lines, one-inch, eight subdivisions right here. If you're on a uh, PC, that tends to be under File Preferences, I believe, or Edit Preferences. One of those two is where you'll find uh, the ability to change the grid. Uh, and that can be a helpful tool for getting a consistent margin, making sure that your uh, legend components or supplement components are neatly arranged across this page. And so you've got uh, both of these options for sort of creating uh, the diagrams right here. One last thing that I would mention that I think is helpful as you're getting started and choosing colors, you want to choose colors that uh, mean something for your diagram, sure, but also colors that seem to work well together. A tool that I found for doing that is going to be under Window and Color Themes right here. So this Color Themes connects to Adobe Color, and you might even have to sign in right here. Um, now, beyond just creating your own themes, going to Explore and exploring popular themes that are on Adobe Color can be really helpful. You can see you'll get a range of colors that seem to work really well together. You just wouldn't want to pick random ones across all of these, but maybe finding some that have uh, a nice color palette for you to choose from as you're choosing icons or you're choosing line weights, or excuse me, line color uh, for your diagrams. Once you've finalized this base, I'd say that one of the more helpful things is to actually go to your layers. I've got a bunch of layers in here. I'm going to go to Window and Layers. This is how you can bring up that dialog. Uh, but one of the things I'm going to do is collapse this Layer 1 and hit a new layer. This is going to allow me to lock Layer 1 and put all of my diagramming components, whether that's the Pen Tool on top of that in Layer 2, or whether that's the Type Tool right here to begin to type information on Layer 2. Uh, it really separates the content from the background in this case and makes it a lot easier to work with. Uh, one of the more annoying things is as you're trying to click on a line, but you're always clicking on this background here, by locking that just prevents you from actually clicking on that background, and then you can toggle on and off the diagram content uh, from there. Now at this point, you're ready to roll with your diagram. Uh, you can start by using the pen tool, shape tools, bringing in icons and images, and begin to articulate some of the site systems in this plan view graphic using Illustrator.